in this next question, so question number three, so calcium is compiled, have a large variety of applications. When we put calcium metal with acid, it will react vigorously at first. So calcium is obviously a more reactive metal than magnesium. If you think going down the group two, the valence electrons is easier to be lost because your valence electron is further away from the nucleus. They are less tightly held. They are more shielded. So you know, further away from nucleus, more shielded, less tightly held, easier to be lost. So metals lose electrons. So we are talking about better reducing agents, easier for you to lose the outer shell electrons. Now, after a short time, you get a layer of calcium sulfate forms on the metal and the reaction stops. So this calcium sulfate is a salt and the salt doesn't react further with the sulfuric acid uh, because you already deposited the sulfate salt from the sulfuric acid. You already undergone the redox reaction. Provided the calcium metal surface has been encapsulated or totally covered by the calcium sulfate, if your acid doesn't reach the calcium metal, it cannot react any further and therefore you will not see any more bubbles. So some of the calcium metal will remain unreacted and that is because you know they are not exposed to the acid anymore. I suggest an explanation for these observations. So there's plural. So first of all, I'll talk about the vigorous reaction. So initial vigorous reactions. So that means very reactive because calcium is a reactive metal. Calcium is a reactive metal. It can lose the two outer shell electrons easily. So easy to lose its two valence electrons in reaction with acid or in reacting with the H2SO4 in a redox reaction. But then the second bit there, the second observation, so once calcium sulfate uh, covers up any calcium metal surface, so this become not exposed. This become not exposed to acid, therefore would not react. Okay, so I think that is pretty much straightforward kind of observations there. In the next bit of the question, we have calcium ethan weight. So we have ethan dioic acid. Dioic acid basically means uh, it has two carboxylic acid. Ethan dioic acid is a two carbon dicarboxylic acid like that. We're looking at the cations in calcium ethan weight. This is a salt. This is a salt of this particular acid. So when you lose the outer, oops, sorry, not outer shell, when you lose your protons, because that is the definition of acid. So this is the salt, this is called ethan weight. And this is a salt, this is C2O4, two minus like that. But you want the cations in forming the salt, the calcium metal is no longer an atom, it is existing as an ion. You want the full electronic configuration. So it has the same configuration as argent, which is up to 3p6 fully filled. It doesn't have the 4s2 because you have lost the 4s2 electrons when you lose the two outer shell electrons to give you the fully filled outer shell, which is now the third shell there. Did you use the charge on this cation? This is pretty straightforward. You cannot give Ca2 plus because the question specify the charge cation 2 plus there. So group 2 exclusively form uh, ions or exclusively form compounds where they exist as ions in the plus 2 oxidation number. The next one is fully displayed formula. They are very clear that they want it fully displayed because students always draw like this, they thought it's fully displayed, but they forgot about the OH there, also has a single covalent bond. So do not forget about a single covalent bond there. So you will notice that I've drawn this oxygen or uh, carbon double bond there, like in a different manner than this. It doesn't matter because this is a carbon-carbon single bond. You can rotate about carbon-carbon single bond uh, easily, and therefore I can rotate about this single carbon-carbon uh, bond, and I could get the same diagram like that. But of course, this is fully displayed. That's the only difference there. It makes no difference whether the CO is pointing up or down because you can rotate about single bond. But the difference is really show all the covalent bond in a fully displayed formula. Um, 
Next up, they say this there's this chloride the one, so you calcium two plus and CO all minus. You have two of them. So it's a chlorine plus one as indicated there. So you know chloride, chloride or chlorine plus one is used as a bleach. So as a bleach or, or bleaching agent, all right? So you also get it when you have cold aqueous sodium hydroxide with chlorine because when you have hot sodium hydroxide, you will get up to chlorine plus five, which is ClO3 minus. But this is obtained when it's cold and dilute condition. Um, I think I'm gonna start by drawing by writing out the actual equation first. It will give you NaCl. It will give you NaCl or it will give you water. But the Na plus there needs to be balanced. The two chlorine, one there, one there. The two sodium, the H2O, one of the oxygen goes there. But of course, this is. 2 Na plus and you have Na plus and Na plus so those are what you call spectator ions so you can cancel them out to give you 2 OH minus and then you get Cl minus and then you will get Cl or minus all right those are the spectator ions so you can cancel them out because they are soluble salt okay all sodium salt are soluble in water sodium hydroxide are also soluble in water you don't need that symbol, but this will be aqueous solution, I guess, even though it's a gas at room temperature and pressure, all right? But it can dissolve in water, aqueous, 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 water, all right? As I mentioned here, this can be obtained when you have hot concentrated sodium hydroxide reacting with chlorine. Hot meaning like, as long as you heat it up, 50, 60 degrees Celsius, yeah? So here, chlorine is minus one. Here, the chlorine, you have three oxygen, each of which is minus two. But you have an ion, so the overall oxidation state is minus one. Okay, plus five there. All right. So what happens to the chlorine in this reaction here? So in terms of electron transfer, right? So the chlorine in Cl or minus chlorine plus one loses electrons. They get oxidized to chlorine plus five and also gains electrons that is uh, gets reduced to chlorine minus one so what we say really is it undergoes this disproportionation because it is both oxidized and reduced in the same reaction and disproportionation is a new terminology uh, as required in the as uh, redox specification Right? either as definition or as part of the understanding to answer other questions. When you have lactic acid with calcium carbonate, you need to identify two other products. So they said you can get the calcium lactate, which is the salt. Obviously, these are carboxylic acid. It behaves just like acid. When you react it with carbonate, you will get salt, which is the calcium lactate plus H2O plus CO2. They say identi identify. They do not say name. They do not say formula. So I'm more than happy to just write down the correct formula rather than having to name them, which takes so much more words, okay, in time. In this kind of question, they always say reagent and conditions. But before we do that, it's important that we understand functional group. Okay. Here they've drawn it out. If they give you a structural formula, it's important that you draw out and see it for yourself. That is your aldehyde. Now it has formed, you have lost aldehyde. It has formed this uh, cyanohydrine, which we say that is a result of nucleophilic addition onto the CO double bond with your HCN reactant and you use NACN or KCN catalyst. And you do this around 20 degrees Celsius because, well, 15 to 20 or 10 to 20. Basically, it's cold because HCN is a volatile, it's volatile, so it has low boiling point. You don't want this to boil off. Reaction two is the hydrolysis of your nitriles. In fact, it's an acid hydrolysis because you end up with the carboxylic acid. Um, you will need HCl or you can use sulfuric acid and you will need to reflux it so as part of the condition 
reaction three. So this is a car alcohol. This is a secondary alcohol. The carbon with the OH is bonded to two other carbon. Give you the ketone. All right. This is a primary alcohol. The carbon with the OH is bonded to one other carbon. Give you the carboxylic acid. So this is oxidation of alcohol. We need the acidified potassium dichromate six, and we need to reflux it because we got the carboxylic acid and not the aldehyde. All right. And going from here to here, um, this carbon and this carbon, but this is the carboxylic acid. I hope you can see it's a it's a reduction, but it's a reduction of only only ketone not carboxylic acid be very careful yeah so you are you're looking for a very weak reducing agent something that will reduce ketone but not carboxylic acid you need NABH4 because that will reduce ketone and aldehyde but it's not strong enough to reduce carboxylic acid that's why your carboxylic acid remain carboxylic acid you cannot use lithium aluminum hydride because they will reduce the ketone aldehyde they will reduce the carboxylic acid all the way to primary alcohol that is in water actually believe it or not all right but anyway they didn't ask you for reagent for condition for reaction form so reaction one was just hcn as your reagent and then nacn catalyst so 15 to 20 degrees celsius reaction three was just acidified potassium dichromate six or you can use sodium dichromate 6 you can write it in words i wouldn't recommend it because if you forget the acidified if you forget the roman numeral for the oxidation state okay then then it's game over for you all right pretty straightforward for four marks what is tar reaction reaction two i think i said it just now already acid hydrolysis so people will just call it hydrolysis because they're asking for the type, but it's essentially acid hydrolysis of um, nitriles. They specifically tell you they use the NABH4 and not the lithium aluminium hydride because NABH4 does not reduce uh, carboxylic acid. That's why you still have carboxylic acid, but your ketone goes back to secondary alcohol. So lactic acid has a chiral center. A chiral center is a carbon bonded to four different uh, substituents the substituents can be atoms or group of atoms okay and in doing so therefore you will have therefore will have uh, non super impossible impossible means you cannot overlap uh, the mirror images on one another that's why you get optical isomerism okay